Hi, I'm Marie Stevens, and today I'm going to show you 10 things that I like to use from around the house to add interesting layers and dimension to my paintings. So let's get started. Number one is something you all have around your house, and it is cups. So cups are great because you can dip them in paint and stamp on a piece of paper and create a perfect circle. That's one thing they're good for. They're also good for many other things, but we won't go there right now. Another thing you might have around your house for making circles are corks. If you have a wine bottle cork, the cool thing about them, this is number two, is that it's textured. So if you were to dip that in paint or just with your paintbrush, add a light texture of paint over the top of it, and then stamp that down on the paper, you can have a perfect circle that has kind of a texture to it. And it won't be, since this is textury, it won't be a solid blob of color. Okay, that's number two. Number three is something I know everyone has, although there were a few shortages of it in 2020, toilet paper rolls. Oops. These are great because you can make, you can dip it in the paint again and make concentric circles. So you could have a look, add them throughout your paintings and create some really cool pieces that way. Okay, that's number three. Number four. This is something that I have, I kind of discovered on my own um, this fall when I was doing a portrait of somebody's house and I was having trouble getting the lines perfectly straight and I wanted to be able to see what was underneath while I was painting it. So what I figured out was scotch tape. Scotch tape worked really well for being able to, since it's see-through, if the paint was dry underneath, then I could lay this right over the top of where I wanted my straight line to be and then kind of paint up against it so the paint wouldn't bleed where I didn't want it to go. And I did create a video about this that I haven't published yet, but that will be coming sometime this winter. So scotch tape is great for masking things. If you're doing a house, painting a, a house, doing a house painting or something more architectural where you need um, to straighten up your lines and get things a little more crisp towards the end of your project. Okay, so that's that four, four things I've, household items I've used. Other, here's another thing that you probably never think about. If you're human, you sweat and you probably have deodorant. Well, someday you might need to make a perfect oval shape. So this would be perfect for adding a little paint on there and then stamping it onto a painting to get a nice oval shape for whatever you would need an oval or elliptical shape for. And it's something simple and easy from around the house. So that's one, two, three, four, five. Number six. Another object you can use for making straight lines is like a credit card or an old gift card type thing. You can kind of use this if you don't have a palette knife at home. You can use this to kind of get a little bit of paint right on the edge and you can drag it through and make get some nice straight lines too. So that is one, two, three, four, five, six. Number seven, if you have ever needed to scrape a pan in your house for washing dishes and such, you might have one of these. It's a pan scraper to get all the gunk off the pan. 
these are nice for pushing and pulling paint around or for dragging. If you want to drag a straight line through some paint, these are kind of fun to use too because it's kind of thick on one end and you can just, you can get them for like a dollar or two at the grocery store. So that's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Okay, number eight. This one is for making teeny tiny circles. Can you guess what this is? Any guesses? This is <laughs> the roll that the it's the inner part of a dog poop bag roll. So it's hard, it's plastic, so it's perfect for dipping dipping into the paint and stamping if you wanted to make a bunch of random circles. And it also has ridges on the edges. So I haven't tried this, but I imagine you could probably roll that in paint and then like roll it this way and get some interesting textures too. So that's the dog poop bag, the center of the dog poop bag roll. Okay, is that eight? Okay, number nine. I don't even remember what this is from, but it's from packet. It's some kind of packaging material. There's lots of, always lots of interesting packaging things for, I don't know if this was, this might have been from like a, a a bunch of undies or something like that I probably bought for my son for Christmas. But if you look, there's all these little diamond shapes. So I'm thinking that I could probably like, first off, I could use it to push and pull paint around and hold it like this could be the handle. Or I could probably, I think I could bend it enough to where I could lay this flat on the paper, kind of like a stencil, and then get some really thin paint and do a wash and have these diamond shapes show. So there's an, one stencil. And then I this is just a hanger, another hanger, but this funky ovaly shape could be, I could use this as a stencil for that. Okay, so that's, I counted that as one thing. That's nine. So the last thing is number 10. And number 10 is um, board game packaging. So like sometimes when you get a board game, there's little cardboard pieces and tokens and things that you have to pop out of a cardboard thing, like a template thing. And my family thinks I'm crazy for saving everything, but I have saved all of these types of things that I've gotten from different games. So like this I've used, if I wanted to make a bunch of circles, I can angle it, lay it on the canvas, and then paint inside the circles. So that's one shape. And this I got from another game. So I have a bunch of perfect squares and I could use that as a stencil for something and then you know if you wanted to get really crazy you could layer things too and then that would create a different effect so i've got got diamonds here rectangles all of these things could be used to add different textures to my artwork so that's all I've got for you today. I hope you enjoyed this little presentation. If you like what you see, do me a favor and hit the subscribe button. And um, then you'll get notifications for the next time I do a little art lesson like this. Thanks, everyone. Have a great day.